More and more school districts and businesses are making the move to four-day work weeks. Could that ever be a possibility here? A Plymouth-style senior takes your love for music to the next level. And preparing for pep rally, you'll be surprised to hear how long it takes. These stories and more coming up. Panther TV starts now. Good morning, Plymouth South. Thank you for joining us today. I'm Jesse Hayes. And I'm Jill Neal. With Thanksgiving just around the corner, Plymouth's history is on full display. A walk downtown can bring it to life, and a great place to start is the Hedge House. Here's Gavin Carraro with the story. With the changing of the seasons, many people from all around the world come to see our town. Either for the amazing Thanksgiving Day Parade or the many attractions, our town's past is full of rich history. For students of PSHS, downtown is a popular spot, whether it's for food, entertainment, or the sandy beaches. But some just don't realize how fascinating it really is. I think historical buildings and monuments are always important for any community. Um, here in Plymouth, we certainly, certainly get a lot of tension or, uh, attention around Thanksgiving, but it's important throughout the year because it gives community members a sense of our history and our shared past and why our town is the way it is. And so I think having those markers on the landscape can really help us develop a sense of, of rootedness right here in Plymouth. Plymouth may be known for the pilgrims, but many other people have immigrated and called this place their home throughout the years. So uh, we like to talk about the pilgrims as coming over from Europe and settling here in Plymouth, but there were many, many other immigrant groups who came in the 19th century and the 20th century that I think are an important part of our history that should be remembered as well. The Hedge House, a 200-year-old building, is full of rich history and run by Ann Mason, always happy to teach to anyone who wants to learn. Well, I grew up in Plymouth. I'd always been interested in history, and I love touring historic houses, so this is such a dream job where I can actually work inside those houses and um, get to know more about local history, which is a lot of fun. Ann Mason and the Antiquarian Society provide many opportunities for students interested in history to learn and work with her. So we're always open to having students come and uh, if they're working on a research project for a class, we can provide information, we can help them find sources for that project. We also offer internships, so we've had a lot of high school seniors who've worked with us um, and spent time in the museum doing work behind the scenes with, with me. Even though these historical events and sites happened hundreds of years ago, it never really leaves our town or our people. I'm Gavin Carr reporting for Panther TV. Imagine a three-day weekend every weekend. Well, in some states, that's the case with school. Panther TV's Ava Davy Bissett finds out why it can't be that way here. Many different school districts around the state have changed to four-day school weeks instead of five-day school weeks. Many different reasons go into this choice, but here at Plymouth South High School, we stay with our five-day week. But that doesn't mean people aren't in favor of the idea of a four-day school week. The sound of the alarm can be agonizing for many teens. But imagine what it would be like if you could have just one less day per week. In some states, that's the case where school only happens four days a week. I think that it's a pretty good idea because it allows people to spend more time on catching up on schoolwork, um, getting more sleep, and getting things done. Because five days is kind of a lot of the seven and also with the a day b day thing like we'll have three classes three separate classes over the course of a week and only two of the other ones so that would be even i think that a four-day school week would be pretty sick um i think less time at school the better because a lot of people get really stressed about like classes and stuff and i think it's kind of dumb that we have like three days of one class and two days of another, I think two and two would be much better. Since COVID, many schools have switched to the shorter weeks due to budgeting, hiring teachers, and the fact that it makes school a little less tough on students, promoting positive social and emotional health. Although students seem to be in favor of the four-day school week idea, there are reasons our school has stuck to the five days. Um, Plymouth South hasn't um, been offered anything but a five-day week, <laughs> if that makes sense. Um, coming off of COVID, we obviously had the hybrid schedule. Um, but we, it hasn't even been talked about, and it's a decision that would be well above me. Um, Dr. Campbell and the school committee would have to make a decision like that. A big hurdle is that the state of Massachusetts requires students to be in school at least 180 days per year. While many students believe they're the only ones who'd appreciate a shorter work week, many staff would as well. 
Um, a four day school week would be really interesting. I think the idea is great. I think it might help students prepare better for college because at the college level, you go to classes two days a week or four days a week. And you, I think one of the biggest struggles our kids have when they leave school is time management. So it might help a little bit more. Um, I think if you had a four day school week, obviously the day would have to be longer. So that would, there would be some ramifications with that because you couldn't just take the six hours out without spreading it out somewhere during the week. For now, Plymouth South High School stays with its five day school week, but you never know what can happen in the future. Reporting from Panther TV, I'm Ava Davy Bissett. It seems we've had a lot of new faces here at South recently. This year, one of those is our new CTE director. Here's Lacey Monahan to introduce us to Mr. Duffy. As a comprehensive high school, Plymouth South is home to 14 technical study programs overseen by newly hired Mark Duffy. You may have seen him in the halls or popping in and out of the shops. This is Mr. Mark Duffy who joined the administrative staff this summer as the Career and Technical Educations Director for Plymouth. While Mr. Duffy's main office is here at Plymouth South, he oversees all the technical programs for both high schools. I have the, the, the great privilege and opportunity to oversee all of our tech programs, both at Plymouth South High School and Plymouth North High School, and get to work with a tremendous amount of uh, faculty that are very creative, um, and then get to see that outcome, that product, that creativity through our students. Although he's new to Plymouth Public Schools, he is not new to town. I've lived in Plymouth since 1998, um, and always was thinking about or looking for an opportunity in the Plymouth Public Schools. My children are educated in the Plymouth Public Schools, so as a parent, I got to see all the great things that were happening um, and wanted to be a part of it from that end. Uh, and I think over time throughout my career, um, I've really, really become um, engaged, if you will, in, in how do we make sure that we're providing outcomes for all students. And, tech and being a part of this community, we can give opportunities to our kids so that when they leave high school, they're employable. They, they can enter the workforce or they continue that training. And that opportunity to be a part of that um, was just a strong pull for me. After a few months in this new role, Mr. Duffy has seen a lot of positives and he expects to see more. There are a couple of things. The, the first was the advisory dinner, which we just had a few weeks ago, to, to see that for the first time in person um, and get input and get feedback from our community members and our, and our advisors um, to see how that whole process unfolds. And I think, um, you know, probably the other big thing would be looking towards the end of the school year. Uh, again, it's about the outcomes for our students and, and to hear what's next for them on their journey. But with any new role, there are some challenges. I think that probably the most challenging piece is never having experience in this role, um, which sounds like a very simple answer, but it's just, I don't know what I don't know. Uh, but to that end, I'm also really fortunate that the faculty and administration that I get to work with um, are extremely supportive and are helping me through all of those challenges. Now that you can put a name to the face, next time you see Mr. Duffy in the halls, make sure you say hi. Reporting for Panther TV, I'm Lacey Monahan. From high school student to recording artist, Panther TV's Ada Morrow has more on a South Seniors musical journey. Senior year is a big year for all of us, but for Sophia DeRamo, it also marks the release of her first album, an accomplishment far beyond what most of us will list on our college applications. From Apple Music to Spotify, Plymouth South senior Sophia DeRamo's music is available worldwide. After falling in love with music at a young age, Sophia started writing her own songs over the last two years. I'd been writing songs for a really long time at that point, probably two-ish years, and it just got to a point where it felt like something was coming together. I had performed at a couple coffee houses and people were really supportive of my originals so I just ended up putting it out there for people to access. This year those original songs accumulated in the release of her first album It's All In Your Head. While the tracks were written over time completing the record took a couple months. I would just be in my basement for hours on end every day. For Sophia music isn't new. It's a talent she's been putting time into for as long as she can remember. Throughout high school, Sophia has been performing with South Ave, the school a cappella group, and this fall, she welcomed the entire Plymouth Public School staff back with a performance on opening day. How we doing? Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Music has just always been a part of my life. I grew up listening to a lot of different music because my family all listened to different things. Uh, and then over time, I just started picking up instruments, singing in, in groups, and I just haven't looked back. So where does Sophia's writing inspiration come from? The list is ongoing. Uh, I always grew up, uh, the Beatles and Taylor Swift were like the big ones when I was little. Um, they've definitely stuck close to me now, you know, more present day, probably like Lizzie McAlpine, uh, Hannah Cole, uh, Haley Williams, artists like that. When it comes to the subject of her songs, there's really no limit. 
everything. <laughs> I think about everything, my own life, other people's lives, other, I just, everything. Sophia plans to continue studying music along with psychology in college. If you haven't checked out Sophia's album yet, you can find it on all streaming platforms. Reporting for Panther TV, I'm Aiden Morrow. From the South Shore to the NBA, a local man who also has ties to Plymouth South is using his experience to give back to kids in the community. Here's Kieran McLaughlin with the story. With the 22nd pick in the 1994 NBA draft, the San Antonio Spurs select Bill Curley from Boston College. Playing for Duxbury High School, he led his team to win the state championship in 1989. From there, he moved on to success at Boston College, which led him to the NBA. There's only been 5,100 players to ever put on a uniform in the NBA. Think back when I was playing, it was like 2,300, 2,500. And so the, the chances of getting there are, are pretty slim. There is a lot of luck that plays in, but you got to create your luck and you got to believe in yourself. And that belief was encouraged by his supportive family. I was very fortunate to have a, a great family. Um, my dad, uh, my mom, I remember going to my mother's games when I was probably that tall. Curly also has family connections that reach the Plymouth South community. Summer. You know, I forget sometimes that he was this famous, like, around here. Like, he's just my cousin Billy, and he's always been that way to me. We played in our backyard on dirt courts with um, plywood basketball hoops on a tree. Like, that's how we grew up playing basketball. His work ethic and how he played and how he got better and better all the time kind of just motivated all of us. His work ethic wasn't just inspirational to his family members, but also his teammates in the NBA. The Ringer reported that Kevin Garnett praised Curly for his efforts to keep improving and for his contributions to the Minnesota Timberwolves. When I think about it, I'm like, wait, he played with Kevin Garnett for years. And it's crazy, it's crazy to th think that. Like, he had a relationship with Kevin Garnett, and they were, like, teammates. Kevin Garnett wasn't the only former Celtic Curly met throughout his career. During his time with the Golden State Warriors, Curly had the opportunity to play for a Celtic legend he grew up learning from. One of my coaches happened to be Dave Collins there, so that was kind of fun to be able to play for, for somebody that, that I'd gone to his camp as a kid, and, and now I get to, to be coached by him officially at, at that level was, was, was pretty cool. From attending a basketball camp with Dave Cowens to running his own, Curly's basketball journey has come full circle. Now he's offering his expertise to the next generation of South Shore athletes. He kind of played at such a big level, also at BC with March Madness, that it kind of inspires me to be better and work harder. You have to go put the time in, and so, you know, we, we can try to show you what it feels like to fundamentally do it correctly, but then it's up to you to, to follow up. Curly's clinics are held every summer here at the Alden School in Duxbury. If you're interested, visit his website for more details. Reporting for Panther TV, I'm Kier McLaughlin. Spirit Week and the pep rally are our annual traditions leading up to the Thanksgiving football game against Plymouth North. But just what does it take to put the show on? Here's Rory Tillman with the inside scoop. In just a few days, the entire student body will fill the gym to get into the school spirit. But what many may not know is that this event takes months of preparation. For cheerleaders, dancers, and fun and games, this is pep rally at Plymouth South. While this event takes place just for the final period of the day on the Tuesday before Thanksgiving, the planning takes almost a year. We do lots of things to prepare. We actually started preparing the minute, um, no, I'm going to say during last pep rally. <laughs> and as soon as it's over, we kind of do a quick session and write down all the things that we thought of that we could do better um, for the coming year. And it's usually a process of like going through and like looking at past like pep rallies and being like, okay, what did we do this time? What worked well, what didn't work well. These meetings include reviewing the tape of the previous pep rally. We are going to actually analyze the tape from last year. A couple years ago, we started having it recorded from start to finish so that if there was any discussion about what we thought went well versus what didn't go well, we could actually go back and look and analyze tape like football players analyze their, their plays and their games. Along with scheduling the order of events, organizers also choose games and activities which they hope students will be interested in. We want to find out what do students want, what kind of fun games do they want to participate in. Tug of War is always really popular and seems like we want to repeat that every year. I'm always game for changing it, but if, if that's what students want, then that's what we want to do. Plymouth South School is to have a very exciting pep rally. Like It's really important to me for it to be really exciting. I think there's nothing... Um, better for you guys to remember from your high school experience than a really awesome pep rally. And, and having everybody in the gym with a lot of enthusiasm is really important to me and so that's what we're going for. It, that's 100% what we're going for. Even though pep rally is fun and runs smoothly, pep rally isn't a simple task. It takes many people and a lot of time to make it perfect. We decorate the 
gym the day before. Um, and then the next day I have about, I have a team of about five kids that I call my assistants. For me it's the decorations because we get to be creative with it and the student council is actually the one that like puts all of them up. To prepare that day, it's kind of all day. We start, we get here at seven and we're in the gym getting ready. Um, but then big picture where we started preparing a year ago. <laughs> yeah. Now that you know what it takes to plan a pep rally, the student council hopes to see you here on Tuesday. Reporting from Panther TV, I'm Rory Timlin. We took you inside culinary on our last episode, and we still have many more techs that Plymouth South has to offer. Here's Angel Chumick with more Tech Talk. Welcome back to Tech Talk. Today we will be showing you the wonders of Southside Styles, Plymouth South's very own hair salon and barbershop. On the outside, students and teachers barely notice the salon as they walk by every day. But on the inside, stylists and training learn to master the craft of transforming hair into a masterpiece. These are the students of cosmetology. Um, we want somebody who's outgoing and um, energetic and excited about hair. Um, people who want to make other people feel good about themselves. But beyond the hair dryers and combs are much more that Southside Styles has to offer. Um, we do hair, hair color, hair cutting, um, foiling, we do facials, manicures, waxing, um, facial waxing, updos, prom updos. We service the public, they come in, um, which is a really great experience for the kids. Ultimately, the journey of a hairstylist transcends the boundaries of a mere profession. For those who dare to embrace the endless possibilities of learning, the path to an enduring, fulfilling career in hairstyling unfolds. The goal is for students in this shop to graduate with their license and be prepared to go right into the real world. Last year we had more than half of our students went out into the industry, and so we hope that that continues to be the trend. Um, and then we even have students who come back years later that come um, want to know how to get their license and then um, have help to get into salons which is great. To be honest, I thought it wasn't going to be like learning about the hair. I thought we were just going to like wash hair, blow dry, we're done. That's it. But what students learn is that cosmetology is much more than that. The students here become a family, working alongside one another from sophomore to senior year, honing their cosmetic and people skills as well and having the chance to practice on the public. A lot of people from culinary will have lunch and then they come over and they'll check out our brochure. So that's really nice. Um, we have a lot of repeat clients and then I believe on the school website as well has a list of our services that we provide. As Cosmo continues to empower students with valuable skills and ignite their passion for the art of beauty, they are also shaping their creativity and world of opportunities. Reporting for Panther TV, I am Intel Chumick. Now let's take you down to Zach, who's prowling the halls. What's the topic today, Zach? Thanks for asking, Jill. Welcome back to Prowling the Halls. This week, I went around and asked you guys what your weirdest Thanksgiving tradition is and why. My favorite Thanksgiving tradition is to go apple bobbing with my family, and I find it very enjoying. My favorite Thanksgiving tradition is when we have um, family over and we get to talk about um, what we've been doing and how we're feeling. Um, usually in Thanksgiving, me and family go outside and play basketball. Uh, it's a fun thing to do all of, every year, and we all enjoy it. Uh, every year, we uh, do a little football game, but since my grandma got tackled last year by my uncle, we haven't done it, so it's been a while. I play bingo, and we play it every single Thanksgiving because my Nana, it's her favorite thing to play. I like to eat turkey because um, it's healthy and protein. We have to listen to the Adam Sandler turkey song the entire time we're eating dinner. Uh, family football game. I'm definitely looking forward to a few days off of school next week. Me too. That's our time for today. Thank you for joining us. Have a great day, South. I missed it. I'm so Honestly, tired. that was close enough. When it goes by, let's just cut it. Let's just cut it when it's June's done. <laughs>